Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and today, guess what we're going to do? We're going to take a look in on blue. So, as you can see, I actually have things labeled nowadays. Look at me go. Um, someday I might remember to put dates on those. So, as you can see, I've been kind of gathering up in the middle here dry castings. So, I am going to put you down, and then we're going to see what we can get harvested. Because today, He's going to get a big feeding. Alright. Alright. So it's been drying out pretty good. Um, most of the worms have gone down and got out of the way. Which is good. Um, You can see the, what I'm talking about when I talk about those kind of hardened balls that happen over time. Um, especially if you sift when it's too wet. So, you know, here's evidence of me not really following my own rules. So that's not a whole lot of harvest right there. So it is dry enough to harvest, but I'm just not getting, um, everything's not all broken down yet. And believe it or not, it is better if you just don't put a lot in there. Works out better. Kind of run my hands through it a little bit. Breaking up any clumps that I can break up. One or two worms up there, not too many, so that's good. And as I am trying to harvest this bin to make room, I, uh, I'm leaving the leftovers in this bin. I'm not moving them to the leftovers bin if that made any sense. If you've not been with the channel for very long, then that might not have made sense just now. But I do often put my, what I consider the overs on the screen. I put those in a separate bin uh, so that I don't keep picking through the same things over and over again. If it's going to be a long-term food, then I, I prefer to put that in a long-term food project bin you know, just kind of see how long does it take for things like mulch and avocado and mango seeds to break down. And it also makes the next time I harvest something a little bit easier um, if I'm not running into the same things that are going to take a year or two to break down. I do have an outside compost pile um, that I could put things in. I just tend to try and let the worms deal with it first. But I put a lot of things in here that um, I would normally put in my outside bin, like plants that died, um, things like that. Try and see if the worms can take care of it. And they do. It takes a couple of years to, to go through like a woody stalk plant, plant like my uh, overwintering peppers. I did lose a few last year. I think I got um, some kind of disease on them. I think we're getting down to the part where I shouldn't do any more, otherwise I'm just going to make those little ball things. So that will be it. And I got a good, good fair amount 
of castings out of this. I'm happy with that. So the plan for today is to flip over the portion here that is pretty done. I mean, it looks pretty done to me. So I'm going to just shove that down to that end and keep harvesting from that end. And I'm going to kind of go back to my wedge method that I had been doing previously, which is to keep the new stuff at one end and keep the old stuff at the other end. And that way I don't add more food down here. I just add to the portion that um, is current. And then that way, in theory, the worms will go away. Another one of those avocados. Yeah, it's a good place for them over there. Alright, I'm going to switch you over and point you in the direction of what I'm going to call the new edge. Here we go. Alright, here we are with the edge. This is what I just sifted off the top. Now, if you remember last time, we had uh, quite a bit of food left over from previous feeding, so I did not feed last week. So let's skim off the top here and see what I have going on. It's lots of worms, for sure. So we'll see what we have in the food department. I really don't expect to see any food. And this is a really good moisture. It's not, you know, mucky wet, but then again, it's uh, not so dry. It's not dry enough to sift, so I think that's a good, a good central temperature to be in. Uh, let me know how you keep your bins. Put in the comments below, kind of looking at, you know, you could make a mud, you couldn't really make a proper mud ball with this, but. Um, you know, it would probably stick together if I forced the issue. Let me know what you, you know, what moisture you keep your bins at. Do you tend to keep it a lot wetter than this or, or drier? So we got a little worm ball here. I don't, I don't see what they're excited about, but we do at least have a little worm ball. And if you haven't been here uh, before, uh, the, this is a mix of the red wigglers, the blue worms, and the European night crawlers. It's what I uh, affectionately call my Uncle Jim's mix. Um, I don't require the worms to, for the most part, uh, most of my systems are mixed like this. Uh, and you know, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. I, I think that that mix does a good job on what I feed it. What my, the whole point of what I'm doing here is to keep things out of the landfill. And I'm happy with that mix. I, you know, obviously, if I wanted to go fishing, these are not the worms I'm looking for. So, oops, where'd he go? So this is a red wiggler. Definitely not the largest red wiggler on the planet. Um, and I don't know if it's just the population density or what, but this is where I tend to see the size of the worms in here. Very rarely do I see them any bigger. Even though this is half of a 50, this is 55 gallons. This full bin is, uh, you know, it was cut in half and then put end to end. So you would think with that kind of real estate that they would max out their potential for um, size. But I don't see that to be true. Uh, they do tend to just stay this kind of, I don't know, I'm going to call it like a community size. They're definitely not getting large because I'm not really feeding them a lot of um, grain and things like that that generally people who are producing them for worm size will use and that's fine I you know although I do I will admit I do get excited when I see a big huge worm and I'm like oh look at that one it really grew so yes I do find it exciting when I have you know big European night crawlers and stuff like that but uh, it's not necessary it's just one of those nice-to-haves. Alright, so I've got this stacked up 
pretty high. Um, I'm not going to leave it that way. I just wanted to move through everything, get it fluffed. And then I'm going to add quite a bit of new bedding to the end here and then feed there. So this portion will be kind of semi-finished. The part that I stack down at the far end is what I'm going to be considering finished. And then I'm going to start building in that direction with less finished items so that eventually that will be all gone down there and then hopefully by the time I get to that end again with new bedding and new food then maybe this end will be ready to harvest and most of the time that is what's considered the wedge method which is what I was doing with this bin before um, I had a rat in the basement and started clearing out my population and my food so I'm gonna move the camera again a little farther down and then we will feed them up. Alrighty, so here I've got all of my, my big stuff I'm just going to put down here. I didn't find any other food that was left. We've just got the avocado pe uh, pits and sticks and stuff. So let me get some more bedding. So that is a lot of bedding. Um, I can kind of hear people going, oh my god. Uh, but that's how I run my bins. I run my bins with a lot of bedding. Um, I just find that it works out better uh, to give them kind of a house for their food. And uh, if it heats up a little, they can get away from it. And if it um, is prepared bedding like this is, you can see the grit in it. This has been sitting around for a couple of weeks. So this will be a good place to add the food, which is going to be a lot of it this time since there is no food and there's like 10 pounds of worms in here. So I'm going to give them a very good amount of food now. So this is probably four quarts or about a gallon of various things here. Uh, melon, bananas, corn cobs, kiwis. Um, banana and then I'm gonna put more bedding on top of this and I'll bet next week we have a really nice worm ball alright and then I am gonna cover this up with existing food or existing uh, worms and castings just so that it does not uh, pick up pests because there is a bit of a smell with what I just put on there I had intended on doing this video yesterday and I did not get around to it so that has been sitting out uh, overnight so <laughs> it's kinda kinda rank want to make sure I get everything covered up and make sure that it's not gonna attract anything I don't want to see so let me, let me take you back out again so that you can see the whole bin together again. All right, and here we are in the current wedge method status. This end over here is, I would say up until this part is, this is all partially finished, maybe 50%. As you just saw, I put a lot of bedding and a lot of food right here in the center. And then down here, is the stuff that I'm going to consider finished and will be sifting as as the weeks go on and but I am going to leave the overs from the screenings in this bin all right guys well that's all we have for that if you like the video give it a muddy thumbs up if you're not a member of my worm family click that subscribe button and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing ring that little bell icon all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day